Howdy, my name is Daxio, and this is Plugged In News. And in today's pin update, uh, we have a big business lobby urges lawmakers to quickly pass infrastructure bill, as well as Biden accelerates bombing in Somalia as end of Afghanistan war nears. And for the last story, we have Washington, D.C. officer who responded to Capitol riot is third to die by suicide. Let's get right into that. All right, and for the first story today, this comes from Breitbart News by John Binder, and it is a big business lobby urges lawmakers to quickly pass infrastructure bill. And it goes on to read, the big business lobby is urging lawmakers to quickly pass the so-called infrastructure bill crafted by a group of Senate Democrat and Republicans that was officially unveiled on Sunday evening. In a campaign, the Chamber of Commerce, representing corporate interests, is urging members of Congress to enact infrastructure legislation now ahead of the August recess. We are taking nothing for granted and we're continuing to work with every senator to guarantee growing support through the process to get this to the final passage vote. Chamber of Commerce Executive Ed Mortimer told The Hill. The Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act presents a significant opportunity to modernize our nation's physical infrastructure and reach the full productive potential of the U.S. economy, the group said in a statement. This legislation also continues and contains important policies to unlock private capital, encourage public-private partnerships, improve the permitting process to ensure our nation's infrastructure is sustainable and resilient. And importantly, the bill contains provisions to make certain the benefits of infrastructure modernization reach rural and traditionally undeserved communities across the country. As Breitbart News has detailed, this bill would, among other things, allow federal agencies to bypass Buy American rules, define gender identity as a protected class of citizens, and these are all in quotations, uh, provide no funding for a border wall at the U.S.-Mexico border, impose state-mandated carbon reduction programs, use racial quotas to expand broadband across the U.S., fund processing centers to quickly move migrants into the U.S., big Business lobby is hoping the bill is tied to a filibuster-proof reconciliation package that would give amnesty to millions of illegal aliens, a boon for corporate interests who have long sought to inflate the U.S. labor market, drive down price of labor, and grow the number of consumers in the country to boost profit margins. All right, and one of the things uh, that Breitbart said this bill would detail, and I knew this, I said this yesterday, that this bill would contain a bunch of bull crap that we don't need that doesn't have anything to do with infrastructure, use racial quotas to expand broadband across the U.S. And I read a little bit into this, and basically it means that uh, communities or areas that have more minorities or um, racial ethnicities will be presented uh, with, I think, 25% of the total broadband thing. Um, that That's like the only thing in there that has anything to do with race, and it's just for racial minorities. And it doesn't expand anywhere else, so I don't know what that's about. I, I think it's more of an economic problem than a, a racial problem, but... Anyways, and for the next story today, we have Biden accelerates bombing in Somalia as end of Afghanistan war nears, and this comes from Breitbart by John Hayward, and it goes on to read, the U.S. military on Sunday confirmed its third airstrike against al-Shabaab militants in Somalia in less than two weeks, stepping up the tempo of strikes against the al-Qaeda-linked extremists, even as American involvement in Afghanistan comes to a close. U.S. officials said Sunday's strike was conducted in support of Somali government forces fighting al-Shabaab in the country's central Gal Mudug state. The U.S. launched a uh, Airstrikes in the same region, July 20th and 23rd, marking the first airstrikes in Somalia during the Biden administration. This is another major blow to Al-Shabaab's means to wage war against the Somali people. The airstrikes destroyed a large Al-Shabaab firing position, engaging the NAB and SNA forces as they approached the Somali Minister of Information set, or Ministry of Information set. These operations limit Al-Shabaab's ability to kill and terrorize the Somali people, the ministry continued. More and more Al-Shabaab fighters are leaving the terrorist organization that is losing to the Danab and the SNA, and we are defecting to the Somali security forces where they have been welcomed and treated with dignity. The SNA and the or the SNA is the Somali National Army, while the Danab Brigade is an elite force of Somali commandos trained by the United States. Somali media favorable to Al-Shabaab claimed that the US strike had no significant impact or impact on the fighters 
Um, and fighters from the group remained active in that area that was attacked. So, obviously, um, a lot of the left, a lot of Biden voters thought, you know, Biden was all about peace, he's democratic, he's not gonna be like Trump, he's not gonna airstrike people and stuff like that. They're all like that. Biden is, um, airstriking Somalia, or bombing Somalia, so, yeah, that's, that's how it goes. Let's get into another war, I guess. Alright, and for the last story today, this comes from Fox News by Louis Cassiano. It is Washington, D.C. officer who responded to Capitol Riot is third to die by suicide. And it goes on to read, a third police officer who responded to the January 6th riot at the U.S. Capitol has died by suicide seven months after the deadly attack, authorities said Monday. Gunther Hashida was found dead inside his home on July 29th the Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police Department said. It was unclear how he killed himself or if his response to the Capitol contributed to his death. We are grieving as a department, as a department, as our thoughts and prayers are with Officer Hashada's family and friends, the MPD said. Hashada has been with the department since 2003 and was assigned to the emergency response team within the Special Operations Division. In a GoFundMe account set up by his family, Hashada was described as devoted and loving husband and father. It is said he left behind a wife and three children. Hashada's death is the third known suicide of a police officer who responded to the Capitol during the attack in which supporters of then-President Trump stormed the building in an effort to overturn the election of President Biden. MPD officer Jeffrey Smith and Capitol Police officer Howard Leinbingood also ended their own lives after responding to the Capitol. Leinbingood's family said the trauma inflicted by the riot prompted him to take his own life. A total of five people died shortly or after the riot, including Capitol Police officer Brian Sicknick, who suffered two strokes and died of natural causes the day after he confronted rioters. A medical examiner's report showed that Sicknick was sprayed with a chemical substance around 2.20 p.m. on January 6 and collapsed at the Capitol around 10 p.m. that evening. Uh, this is just another in interesting and sad story at the same time. Um, this is the third officer who has committed suicide. Um, I believe one of the previous officers committed suicide while driving down the highway as well. So um, we'll, we'll see as this uh, story continues. Yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, drop a like, drop a sub down below. Um, and drop a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know what I can do to improve. And don't forget to stay plugged in. Peace out, boys.